Who are you as a person? Are you a vigilant paragon espousing the ideals of law and order? Do you crave the true freedom that comes in chaos's wake? Or do you tread the perilous tightrope of balance between these two extremes? More importantly, would the path you choose result in the world you envision? A special thank you to Sir Lionheart for letting me use his footage to create this review, as my 3DS capture card was not behaving. I am so thrilled that I finally got around to playing Shin Megami Tensei 4. What a fantastic journey, mended a lot of my grievances with the first SMT game I've ever played, Nocturne, but it also made me appreciate the nuance and minimalism in Nocturne more. Shin Megami Tensei surprised me in so many ways and I cannot wait to share them with you all. I'm telling you, as soon as I finished 4, I was ready to pick up 4 Apocalypse. Like. This is my new obsession right now. <laughs> Voices tell a young man, Flynn, how he will create a new world. A strange device attaches to his arm as he falls to a ruined world. A voice taking the form of a spiky haired man stating that they were gonna create a new world. Suddenly, Flynn appears at a desert. Another voice takes form as a poofy haired man who wishes to create a world where peace lasts forever. And finally, a faceless girl asking to be revived. You wake, and you and your friend are going to the great eastern kingdom of Mikado for a gauntlet rite. If the gauntlet shines for you, you're destined to stay in Mikado Castle as a samurai. The gauntlet honors you, but not your friend, tearing your friendship apart, but leaving room for new friends. Walter, the spiky-haired man you saw in your dream, and Jonathan, a poofy-haired fellow, and Isabeau, a short-haired woman. Together, with a few insignificant others, are the newest batch of samurai. These are the protectors of Mikado and are tasked with slaying demons by using demons. A location under the great statue is Naraku, where demons linger. It is crucial to kill and recruit demons to keep them from flooding through Naraku. To aid with this is Burros, a program in your gauntlet that helps manage your demons, side quest mapping, etc. And this is really interesting and builds intrigue. Think about it. In the eastern city of Mikado appears to be like a 14th century Japan and they have technologically advanced gauntlets with apps? Just something to keep in the back of your mind. All seems to be going fairly well until there was a sighting of a black samurai distributing literature, declaring that the people of the Eastern Kingdom yearn for knowledge. After causing trouble in your homeland, the church tasks you for going deeper within Naraku, into the land of the unclean, and to capture the black samurai. And I'ma leave it there. Now, fair warning, SMT4 has a painfully slow start, but I feel it gave enough breadcrumbs to keep the players interested and wonder just how deep Naraku goes, and what are the black samurai's true goals. Very well, do as you will. SMT4 gives us actual characters now. Jonathan, Walter, and Isabeau join you and go through these wild events with you. It felt nice when things happened and there was conversation. It felt less lonely and it was nice to be accompanied by people who felt the same as you. Confused, surprised, and uncomfortable. I was happy to have a real party this time around. And listen, I'm not gonna try to sell you that these characters were deep or you delve into their backstory. There is none of that, but as you go through the main story, you could see the two men begin to split and have different trains of thought. Shin Megami Tensei is known for having multiple endings based on how you shape the world. Usually there is a law, chaos, or neutral route, or like SMT3, various ideologies that aren't as simple as law and chaos. I regrettably chose the chaos route as it didn't truly align with my beliefs, but I was coerced by a homie to go down that path, saying it had the best ending. Sorry, but after watching all the endings, I'm team neutral. As your dream indicated, one friend wants to uphold the status quo, and the other wants to destroy it. What's upsetting is... Isabeau. SMT4's neutral representative is incredibly weak. Anytime you're posed with a diametric question, Isabeau is just like, oh man, this is tough, what will you choose? rather than have a firm belief on neutrality and comment on how both answers have their positives and negatives. SMT4 was heavily biased in pushing the player toward a law or chaos run. In fact, the neutral run is difficult to get without a guide, as it's attached to specific side quests, and most choices are laced with hidden points. Points toward law or chaos and depending on your score at the end of a certain part, the game sets you on a specific path. And in order to get the neutral route, you have to get between a small range. And let me just say, not all answers are weighted equally. One answer could be a single point toward law, while the other answer is five points toward chaos. 
Man, I am so grateful that SMT beat the shit out of me in preparation for SMT4. I was ready, baby. I am happy to say there aren't any drastic changes from SMT3 to SMT4 in terms of battle, as there is no reason to fix what isn't broken. The press turn system is slowly but surely becoming one of my favorite battle systems. Tag an enemy on the battlefield to gain the upper hand. Otherwise, if they tag you, they go first, which you will dearly pay for it. In battle, there are green icons displayed on the upper left, which shows the number of times you can act this turn. You get one for each teammate you have. Each time you hit an enemy weakness or land a critical, one will shine, granting you an extra action. Alternatively, if you miss or an enemy blocks or drains your attack, it can cost you one or all your actions. And most importantly, for better or worse, enemies follow the same set of rules. If they hit your team's weakness, they gain extra turns, or if they miss, they'll lose a turn. It feels so incredibly fair, and frankly, if they're scoring extra from exploiting elemental weaknesses, you only have yourself to blame, as you're in charge of crafting a team to best combat any foe. There is one exception. Your human companions join you, and they're uncontrollable. While it's great that they can deal extra damage or be a meat shield, sometimes these fuckers hit an enemy strength, causing them to smirk. Smirking is applicable to both you and the enemy, and is when their evasion rate goes through the roof, and they're most likely to deal a critical, landing them another turn. This is the worst because even if you know the enemy is strong against X element, the NPC will still use that element. And I'm like, stop it, you're not helping. Shin Megami Tensei is about collecting and fusing demons to make even more powerful demons. When you fuse demons, you can select what skills the new demon will inherit. Also, take note of their strengths and weaknesses. Sometimes while fusing, you'll run into an error and get an entirely different demon than planned. Some demons can only be obtained through accidents. There are also special fusions, which unlock when you discover the necessary demons to make them. If you find yourself needing the same demon for another fusion, you can use the demon compendium and buy another or recruit one. Recruiting is pretty random. They ask you questions and make requests of you, and some say the answers are tied to their personality. I don't know about that one. My advice is be rude as fuck, don't be afraid to deny their request, and select the most outlandish responses. Listen, once a demon wanted me to flirt with her, I told her I'd kill her, and she was into it. I like this twist playing into boss fights. A boss will start a conversation, and this is the chance to strengthen or weaken the MC or the boss. Or you could be a pussy ass bitch and ignore it and not risk it for the biscuit. I always risked it, but uh, I did not always get the biscuit. Party composition is easily more important than levels. Levels do determine what demons you're able to fuse as you can't fuse a demon higher than your current level. At first anyways. Leveling allows you to distribute stats and earns you 10 at points, which can be used to unlock more skill slots for your demons, yourself, you could raise the level of what demons you can fuse, what you could talk to demons about, etc. When demons level up, they learn new skills, and their stats automatically raise. When all the skills are learned, a demon whisper will occur. The demon will pass on a skill to Flynn, and if Flynn already has that skill, it will strengthen. Another beloved change is if the protagonist dies, the battle goes on. I cannot express how many times Flynn died, but the rest of the squad is still going strong. However, those who are dead can't gain experience. Even benched party members gain experience, just not as much as your active party. But if you are wiped, you get to meet Charon, the ferryman of the underworld. To revive, you could pay him in maka or play coins. I don't know about y'all, but SMT4 had me save stating like a mother. Very few times did I require his services, and when I did, I got to step in because maka ain't easy to come by. I must warn you, SMT4 is an extremely difficult game in the beginning. It could easily turn players off. Reason being, you have to recruit your own party. You don't automatically get a demon to join you like in SMT3. So you're faced with two demons and these guys hit like dumpster trucks. But once you have your party and you level them up, learning enemy weaknesses, the game begins to level out after you've beaten the first two bosses, which will test your knowledge of the press turn system. Documented quests are now a thing. You gather quests from bars, mainly delivery quests, snapping photos, VR quests, and demon hunting quests. Hunting quests need to be active in order for certain demons to spawn. This will halt the story and remove any human party members until the quest is completed or abandoned. Exploration was a personal journey for me. At first, I really thought SMT4 turned into sort of a point-and-click adventure, and that was going to break my heart. You go to different parts of Mikado and talk to people, which was awesome, and I highly recommend talking to everyone after every major event takes place. 
different dialogue, and information you otherwise wouldn't get in the main story. But when you enter a dungeon area, the camera's an over-the-shoulder shot. And what I recently found out is you could zoom the camera out. The hell, I played the whole game over the shoulder. A wide circle will surround your character when something interactable is nearby, whether it be a crawl space or a ledge or finding relics which can be sold at shops. Typically, you don't receive Maka during battle. Few enemies drop it. Outside of the dungeon or cities is the traditional SMT overworld map, which I found very obnoxious to navigate. You have an avatar enter different buildings that may open up side quests, find relics, or find a demon domain, a maze-like area that houses a powerful demon. Optional ones grant relics, and the main ones usually in cities hide a terminal, aka fast travel. These you definitely want to unlock. SMT4 also utilized Street Pass, which I didn't have the pleasure of using as I'm a hermit. The demon can also come back with items. These are what I found on the forums. Also, there is DLC, which I didn't do as it's more about battling, gaining the most powerful skills, and being able to fuse extra demons than a heavy emphasis on story. What a weird experience going from Nocturne Remaster to SMT4, which felt like a downgrade in the graphics department due to the 3DS limitations. Same energy of Dragon Quest VIII PS2 versus Dragon Quest VIII 3DS. This is an interesting case for me because this was one of the few times I preferred seeing the demons in 3D rather than the 2D pixel style. A cool touch is when fighting and whatever move finishes them off, there will be a specific animation for that kill. A critical will punch the enemy into the foreground, or freeze will ice them and they explode. The star of every SMT, I say this only playing two of them, are the demons and their design, traditionally drawn by Kazuma Kaneko. SMT4 is the first game where Kaneko wasn't the demon or character designer. His last artistic endeavors were back in 2009 for SMT Strange Journey. Kaneko took a supervisor role for SMT4 and monitored story revision, scenario writing, and how the world looked. And the torch was passed to Masayuki Doi, lead character designer. This isn't Doi's first time working with Atlas, according to an interview with Game Informer. Quote, He started out in environmental design at Atlas, but then moved on to designing characters when he worked on Trauma Center New Blood. SMT4 isn't Doi's first bout with an SMT game. He designed the environments for SMT Nocturne. However, his work on the Trauma Center series landed him the SMT4 gig. Kaneko might have taken a backseat in regards to designing, but his previous works are fully presented in SMT4. Doi was tasked with creating the lead cast, which I thought was pretty well designed. Simultaneously uniform, yet worn differently to reflect a character's personality. I really admire Doi's resolve to stay true to his style and not imitate Kaneko's work. He believed he wouldn't create anything new or fresh for the series should he try to fit in Kaneko's shoes. Shin Megami Tensei 4 was the first SMT to bring on guest artists such as, apologies if I butcher anyone's name, Keita Amemiya, Yoshihiro Nishimura, Kiyoyuma Aki, Yasushi Nurasawa, and Tamotsu Shinohara. There is a lot to share about these artists, but a simple Google search will tell all and why they were rightfully selected. But I would like to discuss some of these hits and misses. Easily the most offensive design is credited to Yasushi Nishimura for Medusa. My disappointment was immeasurable. And she really does stick out like a sore thumb compared to every other design. And what I and seemingly the SMT4 fandom would agree on is the best, if not one of the best design, is giving to Tamutsu Shinohara for Minotaur. I'm sorry, the snout is a skull and how the bull legs blend into his muscular arms. Ugh. Amazing, 11 out of 10 design. And the artist's work that gets a lot of mixed response, and I suppose is a spoiler, but it's on the box art, so anyways, spoiler, skip here. Keita Amemiya, the Archangels. Historically in SMT, they've always looked humanoid, and they switched it to these monstrosities, and I am 100% team new design. It better captures the unnatural form of angels, and I believe this should be the new standard. In general, I find the less humanoid a demon looks, or the more uncanny valley stuff, I tend to enjoy it. In any case, I will always miss Kaneko's uncanny humans, the iconic upper black lip, and the bizarre but thoughtful take on mythological creatures. But I welcome new talent and I believe it will breathe new life into the SMT series. And speaking of breathing new life and freshening up the series, SMT4 is the first mainline Shin Megami Tensei game with voice acting, and it's very well done. Brings the characters to life and makes moments like these that much more memorable. In all candor, I am a cat. Meow. This floor is so deliciously warm. 
Top three favorite moments of the game for sure. But more importantly is the music. And I was scared because Nocturne was so good. I was like, how is SMT4 gonna compare? I don't wanna be disappointed. And thankfully, I wasn't. Shin Megami Tensei 4 does a great job capturing the old days of Japan while having a militant authority about it. It's fantastic. Each city has its own theme, both above and underground. Various dungeon themes, battle themes, boss battle themes, shop themes, overworld themes. It checks all the boxes and does not disappoint. It is a struggle to pick my favorite. There are so many bangers in SMT4, it's unfair. So I'll share one of my favorites because I think the boss battle themes are superior, but man, the item shop is just so tranquil. If you love lo-fi, this is it. This is the Ashura Kai's authorized shop theme. Shin Megami Tensei 4 may be a slow burning story, but as you uncover the mysteries of Naraku and experience the inevitable division of a dogmatic opinion, the game cements itself as an epic journey. Easily, I'd say its strongest suits are the combat and how investing its demon collection mechanics can be. There are three primary routes you can play through that should each take roughly 62 hours to beat, plus extras, though there is a fourth route that ends the game prematurely. However, I played for 107 hours on one of the routes, and I'm still nowhere close to completing it, as that requires going through New Game Plus to unlock new demons and explore other playthroughs. It's unfortunate that for all of SMT4's brilliance, it's yet another JRPG locked on the 3DS. There's always hope, however, as Nocturne was just recently remastered, and your girl just so happens to have covered it in a review you should totally check out. Or if you're interested in one of the other offerings in the SMT franchise, I've covered the vanilla version of Persona 5 here. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out my Patreon where you can join the Discord, get early access to videos and postcards. Also, we'll be streaming to chat it up about SMT4, about things that are spoilers and didn't make it into this review. Be sure to find my Twitch link in the description below and I appreciate all of your support and I'll see you in the next video where I will hopefully be covering Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Mwah!